Throughout this chapter, we added the basic CRUD to our application, but there's been something that's not very user-friendly about the way that we communicate with the user whenever we successfully process a form and then redirect to another action. What we really want is to be able to display a status message that says, subject added successfully, or subject updated successfully, but to display it after the redirect, once the user lands on the new page. But as we saw early on, a redirect is just like a new request. It's like typing a URL into the browser directly. So how can we set a message and still have it be available after the redirect? This is a classic problem with HTML because HTML is a stateless environment. It doesn't keep track of where we were before, it just submits a new request each time. So every time your browser goes out to ask for a new web page, it's a new request. But there is a way for us to keep track, and that's through using cookies and sessions. And we'll talk more about cookies and sessions a little later on. But the basic idea is that when your browser goes to a website for the first time, the website can give your browser a cookie, and then every future request that your browser makes will resubmit that cookie back to the website along with the request. And that way the website will be able to recognize, hey, this is the same person who just visited because I just received the same cookie. As I said, we'll look at it more in depth later, but for now we just want to look at one small part of this, which is the flash hash. The concept behind the flash hash is that if we're able to store a message in the session, then when the user comes to that next page, we'll be able to retrieve it. We'll be able to recognize them based on their cookie and deliver that message to them. And that way the flash hash is constantly updating itself and make sure that old messages don't stick around. The way that we put values into the flash hash, which is also just called the flash a lot of times, is we use this special flash equals, and then in square brackets, we put whatever we want to assign our message to. So flash notice equals subject created successfully. Now you can use something else besides notice there. It's completely up to you. Error, warning, absolutely anything you like. Notice is definitely the most common one in Rails applications, so that's what we're going to be using but anything you assign to Flash is going to follow this same process. Now you can assign whole objects to the Flash, but I do not recommend it. It's not a good practice. Really what you want to use this for is just small bits of text, messages that you want to pass around. You should use the whole session file, which we'll see later on if you need to store bigger things. So let's add these Flash messages to our application. So I'm just going to jump into the subjects controller here. Um, the index action is fine. I can fold these up with TextMate, so I'm just going to do that real quick. The list action is fine, the show action is fine, new is fine, but create, once it saves, it redirects, what we really want is to say flash notice and then equals whatever message. So subject created. You can say subject created successfully, whatever you like. It's a completely customizable message. And I'm just going to copy this because then we're going to need it again. Edit doesn't need it, but update will. So right before we do the redirect, set the flash notice. Now this message will be available after the redirect. Subject updated. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing for destroy. We can say right before the redirect, subject destroyed. Okay, so that sets the values before the redirect. Now we need to actually read those values back. So the create and destroy are going to go to the list template. So let's just put it on there for now. So right at the very top, above the div, I'm going to display the notice. So let's do equals flash and notice. And that will display the value. A slightly better way to do it is not just to display the message, but to give it a little bit of HTML as well. So notice, there we are, flash notice, and put div. And what I like to do is go ahead and put if-then statements around it as well. If not flash notice dot blank, Blank is a Rails method. It's not part of Ruby. It essentially is a lot like nil question mark in Ruby, but it just reaches a little further. It gives a few more options in there, and therefore it's a little more flexible. So there we go. So now it will only display this div if the flash notice is not empty. So if we have a flash notice, display it. Otherwise, we don't. Let's try it out. Let's go to our terminal. See that I'm in the root of my Rails app, Rails server. There we go. Let's launch Firefox make sure the subject's list. There I am. Let's try adding a new subject. So flash test position four, create subject. There we are, flash test, and here it is, subject created. Now I don't have any styling on it or anything like that. We'll add that a little later on, but you see that I do now get some kind of a message letting me know that I added it. If I click delete, are you sure you want to delete the flash test? Delete subject, subject destroyed. You can see it's already a lot nicer, a lot friendlier, because it really communicates with the user and lets them know what we just did. 
And with this last step of the flash hash, we've completed adding the CRUD to our application. Don't forget that you'll want to try and add the same CRUD to your pages and to your sections on your own. The exercise files that go with the next movie will have my solutions for those if you need to double check your work. There is one tiny detail in our application that's not quite right. If we look at our subjects controller, you'll see that update is going to redirect to the show action, but we only added our flash hash to the list template. We didn't add it to our show template. We could also just add it to show and then it would be there, but an even better solution is to make it more universally available. And that's how we're going to begin the next chapter is by looking at how layouts can help us to do that.